While Genshin Impact may appear rather cartoony and kid-friendly, there are several mature themes incorporated into its story. Each of the characters have experienced hardships, tragedies, and have often had to rise above these challenges to come out as the hero or the heroine. Occasionally though, it's not always a happy ending, and people end up dying. But what really happens when someone dies in Genshin Impact? Before we get into that, if you want to see more Genshin Impact content, do consider subscribing to the channel. Death in Genshin Impact isn't something that is taboo and unspoken. We've seen several people actually die, like Signora, and many more are just spoken about during the story. In Signora's case, after she was defeated by the Raiden Shogun and appearing to be completely eradicated, a tomb was created in her honor in Shinesnaya. During the Watatsumi Island quest in Inazuma, we see a soldier, Tepe, die from overuse of a Fatui delusion. Diluc's father, Krepus, is also yet another person who has passed away when he confronted Ursa the Drake in the past. Finally, you have the story of Stanley, a renowned adventurer who died in the plains of the Mare Javari. Suffice to say, death is actually quite common in the story of Genshin Impact, but it has never been clearly explained where these people go after their deaths. In fact, the concept of something like a soul or a metaphysical remnant left over after an individual has moved on is hardly mentioned as well. From stories we learned about the creation of Tevat, the primordial one created humans with a very specific purpose and destiny, alluding to some higher fate for humans. But again, it makes no mention of where they or any other being for that matter goes when they die. Despite a clear lack of any sort of afterlife, the most common understanding across all nations is that the memories of each person, dead or otherwise, is recorded within the Irmansul. Now to be clear, the Irmansul is implied to constantly be recording the memories of the world, and this includes each person in it, whether they are alive or dead, except for the descenders of course. So it would likely be safe to assume that the consciousness of most living beings can be found within the Irmansul and likely that nothing more is recorded after they die. Because of this, it's difficult to accept that the Irmansul is all there is, as it just seems to function as a tool for recording and not really an afterlife in the traditional sense. That said though, there is still much we don't know about the Irmansul itself and if these memories serve a higher purpose or if they're even used for anything. One potential theory is that they eventually find themselves in the abyss. We know that from some descriptions of the Irminsul, what we actually see on the surface may actually be the roots of the tree itself. The Irminsul could likely be located within the abyss. If this is the case, perhaps much like a typical tree that draws water from its roots and eventually reaching its trunk and leaves, the Irminsul collects memories and moves them to the abyss. What this accomplishes isn't clear at this point, but if this is to be believed, it just seems that the Irmansul is a collection and transferring mechanism and not the afterlife itself. During Raiden Shogun's second story quest, most memories we see leak out of the Irmansul branches aren't even aware they are dead, further lending to the idea that it is indeed just memories. So if the Irmansul only gathers and stores the memories of people and isn't an afterlife in the traditional sense, does that mean that in Genshin, there isn't one? Well, not exactly. There seems to be several occasions that we see throughout the story so far that indicate the potential of a traditional afterlife. During Hu Tao's story quest, we were brought into a domain that was described simply as the border. Hu Tao explains that this location seems to be a place between the world of the living and the world of the dead, and that there are several others dotted around Tevat. Those who have passed on can choose to linger in this border area either due to unresolved issues or just for the heck of it, and eventually move on to what is implied to be the afterlife. She also mentions that this location tends to cause the ley lines to go a bit haywire, indicating perhaps that the Irmansul has no reach here or a diminished presence. Huta also mentions that the location is one that is closer to death, whatever that means. Another situation that implies the existence of an afterlife is seen during Venti's story quest. I won't bother you with the entire story, but essentially, a well-known adventurer in Mondstadt who goes by Stan Lee is revealed to be instead an imposter. This imposter was the original Stan Lee's friend who took on his name after Stan Lee died trying to save him. 
He did this to spread the name of Stanley and this was because he had died in a seemingly desolate place, the Marjivari. The imposter explains that to die there means your soul would not find any peace as there is no way for winds to reach this location. Just to expand on that, in Mondstadt and even throughout Tevat, the wind is largely considered to be tied to the movement of spirits and souls as it seemingly guides them to an afterlife. Venti decides to help this person and personally retrieves Stanley's soul or to be more accurate, he calls it a spirit. After retrieving it, the spirit is seen to move above them and dissipates into the air. Again, this implies that there seems to be an aspect beyond just memories tied to the death of an individual as spirit here could be referring to his soul. After all, why would Venti go through the trouble of revealing himself and showing the imposter all of this if the soul truly didn't exist? Of course, I do have to point out that perhaps he just wanted to give Stanley's friend some closure, but I feel he could have achieved this without showing him his true form. In any case, one other unique occurrence related to the afterlife is the consciousness of Raiden Makoto. In Raiden Shogun's second story quest, we find out that Raiden Makoto's consciousness had been stored within her sword and was released upon Raiden A meeting certain requirements. After speaking with A, Makoto turns into a collection of sakura petals and seemingly being carried by the wind, moves away into the sky. The whole event really isn't the main point of this, but it raises a rather interesting question. Where do the gods return to when they die? As symbolically, it seems to show her moving to a place beyond the current world. Finally, in Sumeru, we see the concept of rebirth being a potential afterlife and each person is a reincarnation within a new version of reality or samsara. So what does this all mean? Well basically, it seems to imply that perhaps there are three parts to any living creature. The body, the mind, and the soul. When anything dies, the body is the first to fail and is what likely tethers an individual to the real world. The mind then goes into Irmansol in the form of memories and the soul is the one which we currently know very little about. Because of the stories I mentioned here however, there is no doubt that the soul does potentially exist and likely does end up somewhere and perhaps even get reincarnated. If we subscribe to the ideas of Gnosticism, then those who have not realized the truth of the world may continue to reincarnate until they understand the actual truth of the world and eventually move on to a higher plane of existence. This seems to tie up all the stories I've shared from all the four regions quite nicely, but it still just remains conjecture on my part. Whatever the truth may turn out to be, there is a lot of story and culture about the afterlife in Tevat, and while many believe in different things, perhaps in the future we might learn of the ultimate truth. It's likely that death is simply just a transformation process into a higher plane of existence. Or perhaps it's something simpler that gives finality to all things. But that brings us to the end of this video and if you enjoyed it, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. As usual, have a nice day.